Hey, Mark, we, we've got a bail out on you. Here's Governor Malloy. Jeff Butler from Northeast Utilities will uh, handle some questions uh, uh, and have a few statements. Uh, I want to point out that we are expecting record lows uh, tonight, so it's going to get cold, which means we're going to have some freezing conditions in the morning. I will tell you that uh, uh, municipalities uh, and uh, our uh, DOT are, have been advised and uh, will be out early, I'm sure, to take care of black ice situations. Uh, to give you some uh, things to report, we have 40 or 41 shelters open across the state. Um, uh, we have 44 warming centers slash charging centers slash bathing centers uh, across the state as well, and 39 of those are located uh, in fire departments. Uh, I have asked uh, fire departments across the state um, to the greatest extent possible to open themselves up for warming uh, and charging, and if they have uh, facilities to allow people to bathe uh, in as much as many of our citizens are without water in their own homes. Uh, 211 has a list of updated shelters uh, on their website. Um, uh, the wait time on the phone is longer than uh, anyone would like, uh, approximately 10 minutes, um, so please be patient. Um, uh, www.211connecticut.org. Um, is the uh, website. Um, we've seen, um, we've had a number of calls today. Um, we've been at it all day uh, with uh, our own uh, EOC uh, operations. We also had a one hour in duration call with municipalities. Uh, we'll be having a second call with municipalities at 7 o'clock uh, this evening, um, and I'll be participating in that. Trains, uh, Metro North is uh, on a normal Sunday schedule and anticipating having a normal uh, schedule tomorrow. Uh, New Canaan and Shoreline East normal schedules tomorrow. Danbury and Waterbury lines are running on buses only limited schedule. Uh, bus service is running in all areas except Waterbury uh, buses. Uh, Waterbury currently is in the process of doing a street survey uh, and they will speak uh, to uh, whether they'll have operations tomorrow or as to what time uh, separate uh, from this announcement. Bradley Airport, two-thirds of uh, uh, all of our airlines are, are back to normal schedules. There could be uh, a morning flight delays tomorrow. Uh, those delays would probably uh, be as a result of we're only at about 60% capacity right now for de-icing uh, because of the power uh, situation out there. So that might cause a backup. So obviously anyone planning on using Bradley uh, is urged to uh, uh, be in touch with their carriers. Um, uh, all cell uh, providers uh, have been impacted in the state. Um, uh, as I indicated earlier, uh, that impact is much more serious than the impact um, than we had as a, a result of Irene. Irene was simply an energy uh, issue. Um, uh, this is actually energy to some limited extent. Primarily what it is is uh, damage. Um, so recovery uh, of those various uh, sites is, is going to take longer, um, and they are uh, uh, in the process process of drawing up their own plans with respect to that. Um, having said that, service uh, seems to be a, a little bit better than it was as a result of Irene, but where it's disturbed is probably going to be disturbed for a longer period of time. Uh, cable television, uh, cable vision has 54,000 customers uh, without power. Um, uh, Comcast has 70,000. Cox has 35,000. Uh, uh, we're talking about telephone users, um, uh, as well as obviously a use of their cable. Uh, people who use cable, obviously, lose their telephone service when they lose their energy uh, to, to their homes, uh, and that's why we give you that update. FEMA's here uh, with an incident uh, team of nine uh, individuals. We did submit earlier today um, uh, an, um, a request for a presidential emergency, emergency declaration. We, are, uh, we have been informed it's being processed. Um, I'm not sure what that means in uh, Washington parlance, uh, but the uh, application is in. Uh, roads uh, continue to uh, 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 improve significantly. Interstates um, are uh, down to pavement um, and relatively clear uh, on uh, the, uh, and that would include the Merritt uh, and the Wilbur Cross as well, so 84, 95, and 91. Uh, our rural state roads, uh, we have approximately uh, 150 uh, disturbances uh, that are related to uh, trees, branches, uh, and wires. Uh, all other um, uh, interruptions of service on state roads uh, have been pushed to the side. So we have a, a limited number um, uh, that uh, we're waiting for clearance uh, by utilities, just like uh, everybody else is. Um, 
excuse me, I want to correct that. That's down to 100 uh, uh, road incidences on our state roads. Food safety. Um, uh, if you're in doubt about the, the safety of the food, then throw it out. Uh, if you've been without power for 48 hours, throw out your, uh, uh, free, anything that's in your freezer. Uh, state employees, all state employees uh, should report to work tomorrow at a normal time unless their work site is posted as closed on www.ct.gov. Uh, we will be posting a list of closed state buildings uh, and courthouses later today or during the evening. Worst comes to worst, check it in the morning. Halloween, I want to address this situation. We have left it up to municipal officials uh, to call um, um, uh, celebrations on or off of uh, Halloween events in, in their communities. Having said that, under no circumstances should any child of any age uh, be allowed to participate in Halloween events um, uh, without uh, 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 parental or adult supervision. Uh, we say this because obviously we have snow and ice conditions uh, and I cannot guarantee that all wire situations uh, will have uh, been rectified. So if your community is uh, going forward with its Halloween celebration, uh, uh, the parent, the grandparent, or the adult in the house has an obligation to attend uh, what other, whatever circumstances that child is participating uh, in. Uh, as I said, Michael West from United Illuminating and Jeff Butler from Northeast Utilities are here. Um, and and uh, I will tell you that CLMP will report to you in just a few moments uh, that they're down to 792,000 outages and UI is down to 19,500. Uh, but I'll ask Michael first to give an update uh, for UI and then Jeff Butler for Northeast Utilities. Thank you, Governor. Good evening. Uh, as the Governor mentioned today, our total out is about 53,000 at, at the peak. We restored about 34,000 to date, leaving about 19,500 remaining to be restored. There are about 133 crews at, at our disposal, including 36 line crews and 15 tree crews. We expect additional resources to arrive tomorrow morning, including about 10 more uh, tree crews. Our plan remains to complete restoration by tomorrow night. And at, at such time, our plan is to release our crews to CLMP to help with the restoration effort in other parts of the state. Uh, we're certainly continuing to work very closely with the town EOCs and cities and expect to uh, make sure all their priorities are taken care of in, in an expeditious manner. That's all. Jeff? Thank you, Governor. <coughs> Thank you, Governor. And I'm Jeff Butler, the President and Chief Operating Officer of Connecticut Light and Power. Um, damage from this storm was actually more extensive than what we saw in Irene. Uh, I heard this morning from the Department of Transportation that they actually estimate that tree damage was five times greater than it was during Irene. At the peak of ours, uh, CLMP had a peak number of customers out of 831,000 customers out as compared to Irene at 671,000. As the Governor mentioned, we're actually down to about 788,000 customers out. We've restored 91,000 customers to date and we, at this time our preliminary estimates that we will have trouble spots in excess of 15,000. Uh, trouble spots around the system. Uh, as we continue to uh, move forward, we have uh, currently have over 300 line and tree crews working. We have commitments for another 450 uh, tree and line crews to, uh, to arrive to support our efforts and continue to look for other crews. As mentioned, we do anticipate getting all the available UI crews once their restoration is completed, which I truly appreciate. Um, one of the other areas that uh, is a focus, and we have specialized crews working on that outside of the numbers I just referred, and that was the transmission damage that has occurred. Unlike uh, uh, the tropical storm, we did not have significant uh, transmission outages. We actually have 44 transmission lines that are uh, were damaged. Uh, 21 of those transmission lines, which is the source to the to uh, distribution substations, which in turn feeds our customers. 21 of those are resulting in substations being out of power. So that is a high priority as we focus on restoration, and that work is underway as we speak now. Once that work is completed, those crews will also be made available to support uh, restoration of the distribution system. Uh, we did have a call earlier today with the through the governor, which we truly appreciate, with the towns. And our focus is to continue to address their emergency situations, to ensure that during the, each day, that uh, until we get all roads open, that we have at least one crew uh, working with the town to facilitate removal of down wires and make safe so that we can pre proceed with opening up roads. Uh, and then also uh, the towns that are requesting a town liaison that we have uh, 
uh, dedicated person assigned to that town working with the town closely in uh, both the uh, uh, prioritizing the, the road clearings but also prior prioritization of restoring critical customers and tomorrow we intend to start providing towns a what we call a town briefing sheet which provides them specific information in terms of our restoration effort that affects uh, as it applies to that town uh, we are continuing to encourage our customers to uh, uh, be prepared for lengthy outages we do expect that some customers will be on a week or more that said the vast majority of our customers I do anticipate will be picked up inside that as we get our assessments done and we assign crews to specific restoration we'll be updating the restoration projection for those customers as we restore them um, for Northeast Utilities which we're part of uh, we have canceled all vacation so once again it is all available resources will be focused on restoration efforts not only here in uh, Connecticut but with our sister utilities in Western Massachusetts as well as in New Hampshire so thank you very much thank you for the briefing gentlemen uh, with that I'll take a few questions or not just, about, just for a point of clarification, that, again, the timeline by which you think the vast majority is, is that within a week, you say? That's correct. I expect the vast majority to be uh, um, restored power to less than a week. But I want people to understand in some areas, a lot of damage, it's it could be a prolonged outage. What we want to do as soon as we get the assessments, timely and accurate, get that information not only to the towns but our customers so they can plan accordingly. Right now, today, the big focus was assessing the extent of the damage. So as we get good assessment information, we will be communicating that information to both the towns and our customers. When you say prolonged, are you looking at 10 days, two weeks, three weeks? Until we get all the assessments, we're going to do everything possible to pull those restoration times in as quickly as possible. You know, very different situation when you look at the weather conditions now with the cold temperatures and things like that versus what we had with Irene. So we know how important it is to get customers restored as quickly as possible. Those 450 crews, Mr. Butler, do we know when they are going to arrive? Are they to arrive? Do we know? Uh, some will be arriving later tonight and through tomorrow. We expect all of them to be available on Tuesday at the latest. Oh, um, do you know where they might be coming from? As far as the specifics of where they're coming from, I don't know that. I know or don't have the specifics, but they are coming in from, you know, day day plus travel times away from Connecticut. So. I have heard Tennessee, Missouri, those type of locations. Once again, we're going well beyond the region. As uh, other utilities have damage, we're going well outside that to bring the resources in here to get restoration completed. Is 450 all that you wanted, or did you want it more? Uh, we are going out to continue to try to get additional crews. We actually have a request in for approximately 1,000 line crews. Governor, driving around today in Hartford, uh, it seemed like there was a real run on gas. And a lot of service stations are either running out or their power is out. Are you aware if there is any fuel shortage or and or are you keeping an eye on any gas out there? Well, there, there is not a state uh, fuel shortage. Um, uh, the terminals uh, in the New Haven area were not impacted. Uh, so it's not, a, it's not the Irene situation where we couldn't get uh, 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 gasoline or diesel out of, the, out of those facilities. Uh, uh, I will point out that the, uh, all of the stations on uh, the state roads are open and uh, fully uh, are getting full allotments. Uh, the, the problem is, is if you're in an area where power is out, um, for that reason, uh, uh, gas uh, stations and, and stores and that sort of thing are a priority. Now, they're not, they're not a nursing home or a hospital, uh, but we'll try to get the, uh, those facilities open um, as rapidly as we can. Sometimes people wonder why we're, we're, we're uh, looking at a, a shopping center. Well, that's where people get their food and very frequently where they get their gas or their, or their drugs for their care and that sort of thing. So we have a set of priorities and we'll work uh, against those priorities as, as rapidly as we can once we turn the corner on safety. Okay. Governor, have you heard any kind of feedback from Washington aside from the requesting process? Uh, uh, only that it, it, it's, you know, it's being processed, uh, which is good. I mean, they're communicating. The FEMA uh, folks uh, the, the representative was in the meeting that I had with all of our uh, state officials. Um, and as soon as we have information, obviously, we'll, we'll get that to you. Uh, I am going to be uh, conducting the 7 o'clock municipal uh, meeting. Uh, and then we will have another go, uh, complete go round tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Sometime following that 8 o'clock meeting, we'll make ourselves available to you. I think my staff will communicate uh, the specifics of that. But if, if you wanted um, um, uh, information, you know, 
we're, we're going to be meeting at 8. We always come out of those, uh, those meetings and, and uh, update you folks at that time. Okay? Thank you all very much. That was Governor Malloy talking there. Of course, he requested from President Obama that we get federal assistance so that we could get FEMA here to really help out in this disaster. So far, no official word on that yet. But what was really interesting from that press conference, the numbers of the power outages at peak today. They said it was 831,000 people without power. That number's come down tonight to 792,000, but still unbelievable to think. Well, a lot of that power went off early this morning because they turned it off because they've got problems this time with transmission as well as redistribution. Uh, it's, it's painful to hear them address uh, the outlook. Uh, th they can hardly say the words that it's going to be a week or more right. that uh, we're out. I think we should count on the fact that it's going to be at least a week and then it may be much longer. But when it comes back, it's going to come back fast because they'll solve the transmission and distribution problems and flip the switch and, and uh, a substation will come back on and all of a sudden we've got 15,000 homes with electricity restored. Um, the governor did point out that shelters are open throughout the state, uh, provide an opportunity for people to take a shower, to get warm, to charge, uh, use their electricity and charge their uh, cell phones. Um, 84, 95, 91, the major highways, uh, the Wilbur Cross, the Merritt Parkway are open again. But towns like New Britain that reported this morning, they've got 150 streets closed. Uh, they'll be longer to get open. They've got snow there. They've got trees down. They've got power lines down. And continued so, problems, of course, at Bradley, which is going to take some time for the airport to figure out those flights and get everyone out of the airport there.